right, here we go. Final lesson for science of the 2019-2020 school year. We're in minerals and rocks lesson five, metamorphic rocks. After this lesson, we'll be able to describe the conditions under which metamorphic rocks form, how geologists classify metamorphic rocks, and how metamorphic rocks are used. My Planet Diary Misconception Rock Dough Misconception, rocks do not change form. Did you know that heat can change a rock's form without melting it? To understand how, think of what happens when you bake cookies. You might mix flour, egg, sugar, and baking powder in a bowl. When you bake the raw dough in a hot oven, the dough changes into cookies. Heat can change rock too. If hot magma or lava come near a rock, the heat can bake the rock. The ingredients in the rock, the minerals, might not melt, but the heat can still change the rock into a new form. So hey, does rock have to melt in order to change form? No, we just said that. Heat can change the rock without making it melt. What are metamorphic rocks? You may be surprised to learn that heat can change rock like a hot oven changes raw cookie dough. But deep inside Earth, both heat and pressure are much greater than at Earth's surface. When great heat and pressure are applied to rock, the rock can change both its shape and its composition. Any rock that forms from another rock as a result of changes in heat or pressure, or both heat and pressure, is a metamorphic rock. Metamorphic rock can form out of igneous, sedimentary, or other metamorphic rock. Many metamorphic rocks are found in mountains or near large masses of igneous rock. Why are metamorphic rocks commonly found in these locations? The answer lies inside Earth. The heat that can change a rock into metamorphic rock can come from pockets of magma. For instance, pockets of magma can rise through the crust. The high temperatures of these pockets can change rock into metamorphic rock. Collisions between Earth's plates can also push rock down toward the heat of the mantle. Very high pressure can also change rock into metamorphic rock. For instance, plate collisions cause great pressure to be applied to rocks while mountains are being formed. The pressure can deform or change the physical shape of the rock as shown in figure one. Also, the deeper that a rock is buried in the crust, the greater the pressure on that rock. Under very high temperature or pressure, or both, the minerals in a rock can be changed into other minerals. At the same time, the appearance, texture, and crystal structure of the minerals in the rock change. The rock eventually becomes a metamorphic rock. So here we have a picture of a deformed metamorphic rock in eastern Connecticut. It says that this rock used to be sedimentary and now it is metamorphic. Hmm. The question says, what changed the rock? Hmm. Well, it looks like the rock is kind of all swirly now. And we know for it to become metamorphic, it has to have some great heat and or pressure. So probably the great heat made the rock less rigid, but it didn't melt it and then pressure on it made the rock go all swirly like that. It looks like the top of brownie is when you like swirl the frosting a bit. While metamorphic rocks are forming, intense heat changes the size and shape of the grains or mineral crystals in the rock. Extreme pressure squeezes rock so that the mineral grains may line up in flat parallel layers. Geologists classify metamorphic rocks according to the arrangement of the grains making up the rocks. Metamorphic rocks that have their grains arranged in either parallel layers or bands are said to be foliated. Foliated describes the thin, flat layering found in most metamorphic rocks. For instance, the crystals in granite can be flattened out to create the foliated texture of gneiss. Slate is also a commonly foliated rock. Heat and pressure change the sedimentary rock shale into slate. Slate is basically a denser, more compact version of shale. 
but as shale changes into slate, the mineral composition of the shale can change. Some metamorphic rocks are non-foliated. The mineral grains in these rocks are arranged randomly. Marble and quartzite are metamorphic rocks that have a non-foliated texture. Quartzite forms out of quartz sandstone. The weakly cemented quartz particles in the sandstone recrystallize to form quartzite, which is extremely hard. Quartzite looks smoother than sandstone as shown in figure two. Finally, marble usually forms when limestone is subjected to heat and pressure deep beneath the surface. Says presto, great heat and pressure can change one type of rock into another. They need us to classify each rock as sedimentary, igneous, or metamorphic, indicate whether the metamorphic rocks are foliated or non-foliated, and then shade the correct arrowhead to show which rock can form from the other. So we know, because we have read many times, that granite is an igneous rock. So I'm going to write I for igneous. We also know that gneiss, because it said that the crystals in granite can be flattened to create foliated texture of gneiss, so therefore gneiss is metamorphic and is also foliated. I can't, I, A, okay, I can't make the letter I. Because you can see that our lines in this are straight and parallel. You can see the lines in here. And we know that nice forms from granite, so we would color in our arrow this way. We also have quartzite and sandstone. Well, we read up above, weakly cemented quartz particles in sandstone recrystallize to form quartzite. So boom, based on that, we're gonna have to put our arrow this way. And we know that sandstone is a sedimentary rock. It has the word sand in it. And our quartzite, because it came from a sandstone, is a metamorphic rock. And if we look at it, we don't really see any parallel straight lines in this picture. We don't really see them. There's some dots, but that's about it. So this would be non-foliated. I'm not gonna try and spell that out again. How metamorphic rocks are used. Marble and slate are two of the most useful metamorphic rocks. Marble has an even grain, so it can be cut into thin slabs or carved into many shapes. And marble is easy to polish. So architects and sculptors use marble for many statues and buildings, such as the Tower of Pisa, shown right here. Like marble, slate comes in many colors, including gray, red, and purple. Because it is foliated, slate splits easily into flat pieces. These pieces can be used for roofing, outdoor walkways, and as trim for some stone buildings. The metamorphic rocks, marble, and slate are important materials for building and sculpture. Here we go, final one. <clears throat> Apply it! Although marble, quartzite, and slate are all metamorphic rocks, they are used in different ways. Number one says, look around your school or neighborhood. Probably not your school because you're not there, but maybe your house and your neighborhood. What examples of metamorphic rock can you find? How is each metamorphic rock used? Hmm, they want you to write your answers in the notebook. You don't have the notebook. And also, you don't have the same outdoors as me. That's a bit harder to do, I guess. Hmm. Well, they did say that it's used in some buildings, so I guess if you have buildings nearby that are marble. Uh. Slate can maybe be like roofs of your neighboring houses or even your house. Huh. Take a peek outside sometime and see if you can try and label the kind of rocks. Number two, though, says, why are chess pieces sometimes made of marble? Hmm, why would chess pieces be sometimes made of marble? Well, we know that marble has an even grain, which means that it can easily be carved into the very many different shapes of our chess pieces. 
What? What, my dudes? We have finished science. That is so exciting. Science done with until next year. So, this is our final lesson that I have to record and give to you to do with as you please. If you are doing work online, please make sure all of it is turned in by June 10th so that I can get progress reports sent to your families if you and or your family request it. And hopefully I will see you sometime soon, I guess. Have an amazing summer and an amazing, amazing seventh grade year. Goodbye.